Good of you to join us at this hour. I'm Daniel Che with the latest on this day. We begin in North Korea, rather North Korean drones that has been arriving or crash landing in South Korea as of late. South Korean soldiers found another crash drone on a mountain in Samchuk, 290 kilometers east of Seoul earlier this Sunday. This is the third such discovery so far and all three drones are identical in appearance. South Korea will mobilize units across the country to search for other drones. Defense Minister Kim Guan Jin says Pyongyang could be developing more advanced unmanned aerial vehicles for attack purposes. The range of these drones is 800 kilometers, close enough to strike major South Korean and U.S. military targets. The South Korean military is considering purchasing advanced low-altitude surveillance radar systems and anti-aircraft guns to better detect small aircraft and shoot them down. A North Korean expert has suggested that in carrying out its recent threat to conduct a new type of nuclear test, Pyongyang may try detonating multiple bombs simultaneously. Our defense ministry correspondent Kim Hyun-bin has more on this story. North Korea expert Jeffrey Lewis said Saturday on the website 38 North that the main question about Pyongyang's threat to conduct a fourth nuclear test is not what, but how the test will be carried out. He highlighted North Korea's response to the UN Security Council's condemnation of its ballistic missile launches last week, when Pyongyang said it will bolster its nuclear deterrence with a new kind of nuclear test. Lewis said he believes the test will be conducted with simultaneous detonation of other nuclear devices. He pointed out that Russia and the U.S. have conducted simultaneous detonations of up to five nuclear bombs and compared the North's current situation to that of Soviet Union. Like the Soviet Union, Pyongyang lacks nuclear facilities, suffers financial issues, and has to deal with unpredictable weather. He also pointed to the possibility of vertical tunnel testing. The current site at Pungeri has horizontal tunnels in the mountains near the site, but the size of the bombs Pyongyang can test is limited by the size of the mountains and the resulting overburden. And he said the test site could only accommodate a few tens of kilotons. He pointed out that larger tests would need to be done in tunnels drilled much deeper into the ground. He also suggested that atmospheric and thermonuclear tests are a possibility. Atmospheric nuclear tests are prohibited under the limited test ban and the comprehensive nuclear test ban treaties. But North Korea has neglected to sign both. Lewis says Pyongyang is unlikely to conduct an atmospheric test, as it would anger the Chinese public. North Korea has conducted three nuclear tests so far, in 2006, 2009, and February of 2013. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News. And now on to the latest in a search for survivors following the sinking of a Mongolian cargo ship. South Korea's Coast Guard on Sunday saved the lives of three of the 16 North Korean sailors on board after a search and rescue operation that lasted three straight days. The three sailors and the bodies of two others who died in the incident were returned to the north this day. The repatriation took place at the truce village of Panmunjom inside a military buffer zone that separates the two Koreas, according to a South Korean government official. The Mongolian flag cargo ship sank some 63 kilometers off the coast of South Korea's southern city of Yosu on Friday. Eleven other crew members are still missing. U.S. Secretary of Defense Chuck Cagle has announced plans to deploy two additional Aegis destroyers to Japan by 2017. Hegel, who is currently in Japan, met with his Japanese counterpart Itsunori Onodera on Sunday and said the deployment is in response to Pyongyang's pattern of provocative and destabilizing actions, including recent missile launches in violation of UN Security Council resolutions. Last year, the U.S. decided to deploy a second missile tracking radar system in Japan and additional interceptor systems in Alaska to counter the North's ballistic missiles. The U.S. has around 30 Aegis-class ships, and experts say the deployments are also part of the U.S. rebalance to the Asia-Pacific region. Japan may cross the Rubicon and put Korea-Japan relations beyond repair if it goes ahead with a recently announced plan. 
Japan State Broadcaster NHK said earlier this Sunday, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe will speak about the importance of Japan's right of collective self-defense and expanding the role of the military in an upcoming speech, an action that could sour relations with neighboring countries like Korea and China. He will deliver the speech at the annual Asia Security Summit in Singapore in May. The summit will be attended by defense ministers and military representatives from Asia-Pacific countries. Japan has been criticized by its regional neighbors for beefing up its military and trying to revise its pacifist constitution. Korea's debt problem is hurting Korea's economic growth and acting as the main bugbear for policymakers. And the ballooning debt held by individuals, companies and government is showing no signs of decreasing. Our Chi myung gil has more. Korea is struggling under the weight of the debt held by individuals, companies and the government. And experts are beginning to worry that the mounting debt will continue to be a drag on Asia's fourth largest economy. Hyundai Research Institute says Sunday the amount of household debt held by private entrepreneurs last year reached an average of 95,000 U.S. dollars, two times out of the average office worker. Indebted entrepreneurs also had to pay an average annual interest rate of some $5,000, also two times that of office workers. Experts say there is a need for new measures targeted at lessening the entrepreneur's debt as they are affected by domestic business conditions. The size of the bank loans people are taking out to rent apartments has also increased over the past three months. Korea's land ministry says that since January, renters have borrowed some $27 billion in loans for rental contracts from local banks. That's an increase of 5.7 percent through the end of March, compared to roughly 3 percent during the same period last year. The Korean government is also having debt troubles. According to the Bank of Korea, the government is paying $57 billion in interest for public sector debt, a 28 percent increase from five years ago. Kim myung Arirang News. Korean students have been ranked among the very best in the world at computer-based problem solving. In fact, students from East Asia were among the top performing groups in general. Our Connie Kim tells us why. When it comes to creative problem solving, young Koreans are top notch. The OECD released the results of its 2012 program for international student assessment, or PISA, which surveyed about 85,000 15 year olds from 44 countries, including member nations of the OECD. Korean students scored an average of 561 points on the computer based problem solving section. That's just one point behind Singapore, putting the island nation and Korea first second in the assessment, and well above the OECD average of 500 points. Asian countries dominated the rankings. Japan came in third place, followed by Macau and Hong Kong, respectively. Considering the margin of error, the results are referred to in scopes such as first second when there is no significant difference in the scores. It was PISA's first assessment of creative problem-solving skills in students in terms of confronting problems that are encountered in everyday life. It looks at whether they have acquired the key knowledge and skills needed for full participation in modern society. The percentage of Korean students that scored a rank of level 5 or above out of a scale of 6 stood at over 27 percent. That led the OECD countries by a large margin. As for gender, male students scored 13 points higher than their female counterparts. The Korea Institute for Curriculum and Evaluation said that the findings reaffirmed the strong competitiveness of Korean students against their overseas peers when it comes to creative problem solving. Connie Kim, Arirang News. Some positive news coming from Afghanistan. Voter turnout for the country's historic presidential election on Saturday was much larger than expected. The country's election commission chief said nearly 60 percent of the 12 million eligible voters went to the polls, or double the turnout for the last election five years ago. The election was largely peaceful, and voters appeared determined to have a say in the country's first ever democratic transfer of power. Dozens of minor roadside bombs and attacks on polling stations were reported despite a threat by the Taliban to stage attacks around the country. 
Over 350,000 government security forces were dispatched to polling stations, and rings of checkpoints and roadblocks were set up. And Iran says that its expert level nuclear talks with world powers in Vienna this week were substantive and useful. Iranian negotiator Hamid Baidinejad said Saturday that all major technical issues were addressed in the way of a final settlement. He said the results would be submitted on Monday to Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif and European Union Foreign Policy Chief Catherine Ashton, who acts on behalf of the six world powers, the United States, France, Germany, Russia, Britain and China. Zarif and Ashton are to hold their third round of high-level nuclear talks in Vienna on April 8th and 9th as part of efforts to reach a comprehensive agreement by late July. The world powers are seeking to limit Iran's controversial uranium enrichment activities in return for a lifting up economic sanctions. In sports, rhythmic gymnast Son Yun Jae made her mark in the history books by winning her first gold at the International Gymnastics Federation's World Cup in Lisbon on Sunday. With the win, the year apparent to Kim Yun-ai in terms of sheer popularity here in Korea has proven she has the right stuff to create her own athletic legacy. She earned a total of 71.200 points in the individual all-round with flawless and graceful execution in the hoop, ball, club and ribbon events. This is the first time a Korean gymnast has grabbed the gold medal in the individual all-around at the World Cup. Sun said during a press conference after the competition that she tried to stay as relaxed as possible, a simple strategy that ensured her historic win. Well, Sunday was a little chilly here in Seoul, but Seoulites may want to get out and soak in the rays on Monday when the temperature will rise somewhat. But do brace yourself for a considerably colder evening. And now let's check out the weather conditions in your neck of the woods and around the world. And that brings us to the end of our newscast. Thank you for watching and have a great start to the week.